Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, you guys are doing well. Just waiting for a couple people to come on. Sorry, I have a little cold that I'm getting through. So, uh, we're going to start, inshallah. Today, I have somebody that I've connected with through Instagram, and it's been really amazing to getting to know um, Brother Zuhair. So, let me just give you a little intro about him if you don't know already, and then we'll bring him on. So, Brother Zuhair is the founder of Afia Healing. If you don't follow them, definitely follow. Um, it's an alternative healing modality focusing on physical and emotional help uh, problems basically he has successfully taught the art of afia healing not only in the uk but uh, it globally and i love listening to his talks on instagram and let's bring him on and today we're going to talk about healing and how it can make us a better parent assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah how are you good alhamdulillah how are you yeah good mashallah what's happening on your side we finally got a chance to do this because for so many um, months and actually even longer, we've been DMing and talking about parenting and just talking about this exact topic, how healing can help us become a better parent. Yeah, absolutely. Alhamdulillah. Sorry, how so, far did you get? I just started and then I said that before we even get into why it can make us a better parent, what are some why what is the reason why we need to heal and i was thinking um i was thinking that you know just the climate of what's going on in our society now and the pressures that we have the p parenting is really hard it's even harder and i feel like compared to how uh it was when i was younger it's so much harder there's so it's hard to be a kid and it's hard to be a mom or a dad and what does that entail? That means that we have to be even stronger. We have to get rid of our emotional baggage and any kind of stuff that's holding us back so we can be present and be really strong to head to charge to really raise kids the way we want. Absolutely. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi sharah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hallul uqdata min lisani afkahu qawli. Rabbi zidna ilma wa razukna fahma wa ja'alna min ar-rashidin. Alhamdulillah. Um, mashallah, look, this is an extremely um, important topic. And mashallah, you know, you've got a beautiful name that goes with it as well. Brave Muslim parents, because for the most part, most parents don't know what to do. And if they know what to do, then they're not, they don't have enough courage to do what it takes. Mm -hmm. And parenting takes courage. Parenting takes guts. Parenting takes mm -hmm. a lot out of a person. There's so much sacrifice that is required. And in all of that, <clears throat> we really need to be fully equipped. And like you said, all these issues that we are seeing across the globe, and especially as, you know, um, society is just moving so fast, um, it's, it's just like an exponential increase in everything, that the stimulus and everything mm -hmm. that's going on is this, we just can't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And we just need to try and connect and understand where and what is the need? What issues are going on? And, and this is where the problem really lies is as parents, we don't know what to do. Okay. And yeah. we all agree. And I, I myself as a parent um, look back and said, yeah, mashallah, you know, when I was being parented, maybe I didn't like it. Maybe there were some issues, but reflecting back and then having to take that role on for myself, we can see how great a burden that actually is. And then I can, mm -hmm. I see the dynamic as well is when I'm, when I'm telling my children off, for example, my mom will butt in and say, no, 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 leave them alone. And I'm like, hold on, but you beat me up for the same thing back then. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. why has it changed now? But again, this is what happens with experience. This is what actually happens with um, exposure and understanding of what we go through <laughs> as parents, but also what our children go through in the processes of growing up. And that's what's extremely important is understanding that dynamic. What does it take um, to be able to parent our children in the best possible way? Mm -hmm. We're not going to get it perfect. No one ever gets it perfect. Mm -hmm. But just do a little bit more good than you do of the bad. Mm -hmm. And that's and you know, one stuck. Thing, yeah, and one thing that I 
I would look for are things that are universal, that was t that's timeless. And that's what our dean teaches us. They give us tips that actually we can use at any time, in any circumstance, with anybody, even our, even our kids and our children, you know. And certain things, you know, one of the major things I think that's really helped me is just being present. And it's simple, right? Just be present at the moment. But it's so hard to do. And there's so many things that block us from being present. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, okay. Being present. Okay. Define your being present. How do you, how do you exercise that? How do you put it into um, practice? I would say my senses are like I'm here mentally and physically I'm here. So when I'm looking at my son and he's talking to me, I'm listening to him, but I'm also looking at him. Yeah. I'm not thinking about what I have to do tomorrow or yes, what happened yesterday. I'm just being totally mentally there. Mm. And that's really hard to do, I feel like, yeah. because a lot of times we're in our heads. And how long has it taken you to get to this stage where you can sort of really switch off and be present? Many years. It has taken years of maybe I would say six, yeah. five or six years. Yeah. And I mean, this, is a, this is this is something that requires a lot of practice. Yeah, um, yes. It's not easy to, to to begin with because we're so preoccupied. Um, yeah. But I think this is this is okay. This is something that's quite interesting. Is what brings about being present in the role of parenting? Mm -hmm. Where I come from, uh, in my background of working with people with emotional baggage, we need to understand that when we are overwhelmed with emotions we don't have time or the focus to do our parenting role effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it just, that's what preoccupies our mind. And whatever emotion is floating in our mind is manifested through the body. And that is what the children get a brunt of. Mm -hmm. We also need to understand that our children are an extension of our emotions. Mm -hmm. Not just an extension of us, they're an yeah. extension of our emotions. Why? Because they get the brunt of it. But when you flip that coin over, and this is what I see with a lot of my clients, um, is your children manifest the symptoms of the emotions that you are holding on to. Wow. The emotions that you want to hide, the emotions that you've been suppressing for decades, suddenly you realize, hold on, why has my child suddenly developed this ear infection? Why is it that he's got this persistent cough? Why is it they've got a nasal drip? Why is there suddenly colic in my child? Why is it my, my child suddenly has been diagnosed with this, with this terminal condition? Okay. You know, even though the physical umbilical cord is cut, the spiritual one, and especially the emotional one, is mm -hmm. never severed. Wow. Yeah, and, and this, is what, this is why it is so important. And a lot of the times when it comes to parenting, the children are never the problem. Mm, the yeah, children are never the problem. The problem is only you. Mm. The problem is always your perception of how you look at the problem and the way that you actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. So even today, this afternoon, I think something triggered me <clears throat> and then I had to do the school run. And in doing the school run, I'm just carrying on. I'm like, but it's just a matter of I'm choosing my words now because in, in this moment, my trigger can send me off either way. And so when doing that, subhanAllah, what we start to see is what impact do, do each of our words have on our children? What, mm -hmm. what message is solidifying in their minds? What is it that I'm saying that's making them feel, yes, I'm worthless. I'm still worthless. Mm -hmm. I'm still mm -hmm. no good. I'm still dumb. I'm still not worth it. Mm -hmm. And how much more is that child going to try then um, to, to try and make up, overcompensate mm -hmm. in their behavior that may yeah. lead to OCD in the future? Yeah. Okay. And, and these are the links that we need to understand. And, mm -hmm. and this is why, for me, my focus really is the parent themselves mm -hmm. and their own personal baggage. Once, mm -hmm. your, once your load lightens, automatically that gives you a sense of clarity. Mm -hmm. And without having to say anything to your children, they will sense the change in you. Yeah. And automatically their behavior changes with you. Mm hmm Yes. If they feel Absolutely. threatened by your presence, their behavior is different to when they can feel comfortable with you. 
and they can only be comfortable with you when you are comfortable with yourself so one thing that you had mentioned earlier is that for example um us making our kids feel worthless or not enough and sometimes some parents might be like well i never tell my kids oh you're worthless you i never say that but sometimes our actions or things that we don't realize may trigger that in them Absolutely. in that oh yes i am um one thing that i realized that happened with me is that i would always suggest to my kids uh a better way to do it next time so that gave them the feeling of you know in my mind i'm thinking i'm teaching you i'm suggesting to you i'm coaching you into you know and i'm mentoring you basically um to what to do next time when these things happen mm. but in that moment my one of my kids said to me it's like i'm not good enough it's like it's never good enough for you and that was like whoa i i didn't have <coughs> my intention but it wasn't yeah. <clears throat> and that is a massive massive uh, self belief that most brown people carry mm-hmm. okay for asians for indians any from the subcontinent yeah. it's never going to be good enough and only the other day so yes. i was i was jotting a few things down and i was sort of doing a download of myself and and one of the sentences that that keeps coming up for me is nothing will ever be good enough mm nothing mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so whether it's a, it's it's a pizza or it's a cake or it's a car or it's whatever it may be mm-hmm. there will always and we have this knack you know genetically of finding a nooks in everything okay. that we look at yeah. okay exactly. and and that is learned behavior yeah yeah because and that's you know, how it's my daughter, beginning great yeah and when my daughter said that to me it you know what i remembered automatically I automatically remembered me saying that to my mom around that age. Yeah. Where I said that can I remember saying can you say anything positive? Yeah. And and that gave me that flashback and I was like yeah. wow. Yeah. So then and the, and, the, and the general Asian way of parenting was only pull out the 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 problems but never compliment the good things. Mm-hmm. You know so there's no sort of a, a this this barometer where you can sort of check yourself on to say yeah okay these things were good i've done well you know 16 times i did well i e my parents stayed quiet for 2 weeks they didn't say yes. anything but the yeah. one time i messed up or i came late from madrasa or school or my exam mark was low then i got a thrashing okay mm-hmm. verbal or whatever and as a result of it this is what sticks with me the repetition of that same uh, mm-hmm. you know fault finding nitpicking okay mm-hmm. why why 94% why 90 not 96 you know mm-hmm. and and this in itself even though we don't mean it we don't express it the mm-hmm. message that comes across the other side simply is again i wasn't good enough again mm-hmm. i didn't meet that target so mm-hmm. what's happening there is ultimately it's it's cementing this negative self belief within themselves that for me when i work with clients who are 20 30 40 50 60 even 70 and 80 the same negative self belief keeps coming up mm-hmm. okay and where did where did you first hear it what is your first you know memory of it it happened when i was a child mm-hmm. okay and this is why you know when um, you know the 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 prophetic way of of bringing up children which is often mentioned alhamdulillah is we divide the ch- the child's um, growing age into seven year slots right mm-hmm. the first seven years you play with the child Mm-hmm. so there is no tarbiya there is no discipline mm-hmm. there's no screaming shouting swearing and calling them names mm-hmm. it is to play the second seven years is the discipline and not mm-hmm. discipline whereby you beat them up but discipline you show by your actions yeah. okay you simply set an expectation and they have to mm-hmm. you know just sort of mirror you with it and this is mm-hmm. the amazing thing about children is they they mirror adult behavior Mm-hmm. okay whatever you do they will do this is why you see two year olds you know on the musalla they'll be flapping their hands and throwing themselves yes. on the floor they just mm-hmm. see it and they want to do it but at yeah. the same time they also see us swearing they see us shouting at one another they see fighting between mm-hmm. parents and that doesn't sort of that sort of confuses their little minds mm-hmm. beyond those seven years of discipline now is the time to befriend them mm-hmm. from 15 to 21 mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. this is my companion you will travel with me you will go with me 
We will go mm -hmm. shopping. We'll go to the shops. We'll go to my friends. We'll go traveling. Um, and beyond 21, what happens? They're an adult. They're on their own now, mm -hmm. right? But unfortunately, we don't seem to, you know, break that up into cycles. I have, I know 50 and 60 year olds that are still being treated like the first seven years of yes. their life. Still yes. being told, why are you going out this time? Why are you not coming back? What impact does it have? It's not just had an impact on that 50 year old. It's mm -hmm. having an impact on the whole family. You know, yes. the, the grandchildren are being affected. Everyone is affected. Yeah. And so this is, this is what brings the carnage into our society. It mm -hmm. rips the fabric of our society ultimately. And then we ask ourselves, oh, our children are misguided. Our children have gone off the path. Duh. Why not? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, why not? I mean, where else would they go? Mm -hmm. Because if you cannot give them that sense of validation, they will go anywhere else to seek as it. far away from you so that someone can appreciate and love them. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think we, one of the main factors why people don't follow that is out of fear. They don't want, they, they fear something so much that they want to manipulate or force and you can't force. So, you know, I, my kid's not praying. He's seven. He's not praying. Oh my gosh. Then he's never going to pray. Mm. We have to make him. I have to force him. And force never works. Yeah. It has to be a mirroring. Yeah. And this is why it's so important. Even psychologists, you know, they'll tell you that the first six stroke, seven years of a child's life are the mm -hmm. most important because the brain's really forming at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, in some texts it says up to six years. But the reality is you spend a year in your mom's womb anyway. That's the first mm -hmm. year. Yeah. I have so many clients who have issues and memories from that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that they they know or when when asked, you know, the mother was under severe amounts of stress, whether it be domestic violence, whether it was escaping wars, whether it was escaping or moving countries, whatever it was, there was a serious amount of, of, of stress involved, which ultimately impacts the child. Mm -hmm. And this is what we find a lot with a lot of kids. You know, and this is the analogy I give is that, you know, with the, with, with the hi-fi systems that we used to get. Okay, is that you used to have the central box, the, the player with the cassettes and the radio dials, but then the yeah. speakers are further away. So you'd stick one speaker up on that wall and one on that wall. Those speakers are your children. Mm -hmm. You are that box in the middle. Wow. Whatever it is that's playing in you, it's blaring mm -hmm. out from these speakers around mm -hmm. you. It's, it's surround sound. Yeah. Okay, and then you look at them and you hate them for it. But when you slow down and you become present with them, they're actually screaming and shouting your own pains back at you. And you know what? I never realized what was going on inside of me until my kids triggered me. Yeah. Until they said things and, and it's <laughs> almost as if they forced me to be present. So I knew that, okay, I have to see what's really going on <laughs> and be introspective. And when I did that, they showed me myself. Yeah. They showed me my own insecurities, why yeah. I'm doing certain things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the greatest blessing in having kids is that they show us, they should hold up a mirror to us. Yeah. But are we too busy to look? Are we going to ignore it? Because they're going to show us anyways. We can discipline them. We can um, manipulate them into yeah. not showing us, but it's still there. Yeah. And it takes a lot of courage to look and say, oh, I see this. I, I see myself. The The problem mainly that we have is we recognize that there's an issue. Mm -hmm. But for most people that I speak to is we don't know what to do after that. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to heal? Yes, I would. But I don't know how to. You mm -hmm. see, and, and that's where for most people, that's the first obstacle that they come across. I don't know how to go through this process. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do with this emotion? I want to let it go. When? Uh, I don't know. How about now? Yes, okay. Well, let's let it go now. I don't know how to. <laughs> and this is where this whole facilitation of, um, yeah. of emotions, one, acknowledging what it is, recognizing mm -hmm. it, connecting to where it actually comes from, and then mm -hmm. releasing it. Okay? And once it's released, the, the process isn't finished because then you have to replace it with a positive affirmation, with okay. love and acceptance. Because this is where most therapy will take you to the extent of releasing the negative emotion. Okay. But now that you've actually created a cavity, what are you going to fill that up with? Okay. And so, so that's where your, we need the light. The, 
the deep trauma healing that you do that's yeah. coming up that you have is that what it does that the process of like yeah, okay i want to heal yes. all the way through so the whole process uh, introspecting mm-hmm. to find out where does my self limiting belief come from so if you mm-hmm. find yourself to be a procrastinator the emotional root cause of procrastination is a sense of worthlessness mm-hmm. when where did that come from identified mm-hmm. it came from when i was 3 years old i came home with a wow. lollipop or something and uh, my dad said Bleh. or he didn't look at it or my painting he mm-hmm. didn't acknowledge it mm-hmm. and it's been with me since and every time i get a a poor mark or low mark then it's it's thrown back in my face so introspect find find all those occasions when i've felt worthless to process it in my mind release it through meditation mm-hmm. and other um you know processes that we we share thereafter uh we go through a process of getting a very deep insight that this happened to me when i was 3 years old and the next memory was when i was 10 years old but mm-hmm. for the last 30 years i've been punishing myself mm-hmm. i've been carrying the slanders of other people and mm-hmm. and hurting myself with it mm-hmm. once so once we get there we need to go through a process of forgiveness mm-hmm. okay and that forgiveness has to be deep for ourselves mm-hmm. i'm sorry that i hurt you not i'm sorry if i hurt you i'm mm-hmm. sorry that i've hurt myself mm-hmm. it's only after that forgiveness can we bring in self love and once the self love starts to pour in that negative emotion dissolves away okay allows us to get to a point of acceptance and this is what forgiveness is right you cannot say you've forgiven someone but carry the hurt the pain and the sadness with you yeah true okay when you forgive someone you need to understand that that forgiveness was not for them the forgiveness is for you okay wow that's deep that's very deep right that's deep. and and that's what's important is we've been carrying the hurt pain and sadness from other people thinking that it's because of them my life's a misery mm-hmm. but the reality is that allah is going to ask you about yourselves mm-hmm. not what others did to you mm-hmm. how did you conduct yourself in all the scenarios that we put you through well this guy called me lazy and that person called me fat mm-hmm. and okay now i've been you know just self harming myself all the way through yeah Yeah I've just literally lived that whole life as if they were there continuously telling me this and we believe them and then we believe that as well mm-hmm. it's self harm you know and and ultimately this is not on and so mm-hmm. until we don't acknowledge that that the forgiveness because you see this is the other thing that I get a lot of clients will come and say um you know I want to work with my issues right whatever chronic issues that they have mm-hmm. and when I inquire they'll say okay something like well my parents have passed away right mm-hmm. so i don't want to i don't want to open that chapter but hold on and i've forgiven them i said you clearly you haven't yeah. had you forgiven them these symptoms would not be manifest on you okay you you why are you still suffering from sleepless nights why have you got this uh, issue all down your right hand side whatever the, whatever the problem may be you have clearly not forgiven them and for every night that you are unable to sleep or crying yourself to sleep or you know getting this this you know uh, massive amounts of pain in your in your gut okay because your dad kicked you there mm-hmm. there is going to be a consequence in the grave for them as well unfortunately yeah there's a consequence and the sooner we actually deal with that issue you also help them remember you know there's these quotes that come out that when you heal yourself you heal your past generations yeah. and your yeah. future ones Mm-hmm. and when i sat with it it's it's true subhanallah that when you've wronged someone and you die and they are still crying on the face of this earth yeah there is a consequence in the grave with you and yeah, that's definitely. what we need to be able to understand is what is the impact and the consequence of my actions after i die if are my children going to continue suffering are the other people that i've hurt and you know done all wrong to are they yeah. going to be cursing me after i've died And yeah. so this is important that in order to heal we need to also dig up our parents and our loved ones or unloved ones from their graves and forgive mm-hmm. them acknowledge what they did yeah feel that hurt for that moment but then let it go yeah and i think Because what until it's is- not done you keep punishing yourself and your and yeah. your children for it and i think one thing that i i realized that um <clears throat> all parents did the best that they could with what they knew and a lot of it is generational it's not just it started with my parents and they were mean 
Is this, no. That's all they knew. That's the best yeah. that they knew. Forget about whether they knew or they didn't know. Mm -hmm. They did the best that they could. Mm -hmm. But my interpretation of what they did is very skewed from what their intention was. Yeah, true. That's, that's the difference. So look, yes. you want goodness for your child. I want goodness for my child, right? I'll tell my child to, you know, stand up right or fix up or whatever it is. My intention is not to instill negative self-belief into him. Mm -hmm. I want the best for him. I want him to grow exactly. up well and, you know, be well-mannered. Um, but if he takes it the wrong way and that's yeah. not communicated between us, that stays exactly. with him. Yeah. So a lot of times our intentions are not communicated to them. It's They're just... Not what we say or how yeah. we look at them, our tone of voice, yeah. they interpret that however they can, they feel like mm -hmm. it is coming on to them. And it's not necessary or not necessary or intention. And even if later on as an adult, I realize that intention, but all through that whole 20, 30 years, I didn't. Yeah. And so I have to go undo all of that. Yeah. And, and, and I think that undoing also is part of our toba. Okay, where Allah says in the Quran, Tawbat and Nasuha, it's a very deep um, and, and sincere repentance. Okay, and, and that goes all the way back. So we can have messed up. We, we have messed up, you know, in, in all our, in our possible ways. But it's not the end of the line. Okay, we can still make amends. We can still put this right. Yep. And it works amazingly um, well, alhamdulillah. I have one question that maybe we can just answer. Somebody mm -hmm. asked the constant neck pain while we are releasing um, the stuck emotions. Is there any way to get rid of that as no medication helps in relieving okay. that? Where's um, the pain? The neck. Every time the they're stressed or anxious. Yeah, okay. So the neck, um, is it on the right side or is it on the left side? And are they right-handed or are they left-handed? Um, but also the neck is, is, is the connection between the mind and the heart. Mm. So when you are torn up in decision, indecisive, then this is where the neck is actually going to mm. manifest that pain. Okay. Um, some people have the same um, issue and they're saying the back of the neck. They're right-handed, yeah. most of them, the back of the neck. Like even me, like, yeah, that other person said right side. Um, for me, even, like, I crack my neck all the time. Yeah. Like, I'll just go like that, like, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, we need to understand is um, anything that's musculoskeletal, okay? Any muscle pain or skeletal pain is always to do with a self-worth conflict, mm -hmm. okay? That we are not feeling very good about ourselves. And that will affect us depending on um, where it actually affects us in our body. So the neck usually, neck is connected to the shoulders. Shoulders is about carrying the burden, mm -hmm. right? If you are right-handed, that'll be your dominant side. Um, you're carrying the burdens for the people of authority around you. Might be your father, might be your spouse, um, and might be your siblings, okay? Issues around that or work colleagues and friends. <laughs> Whereby your left side then would be your non-dominant side. It would be your nurturing side. And this is where you have your children and your mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you were switched, then it would be the other way around. So normally you will see that a person will manifest symptoms just on one side of the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you ask yourself, why? What's going on? And when you ask these questions, you really start to see a pattern emerging from it. So in that case, um, yeah, it's, it's just about processing that. What is it that I've let myself go of? Um, why is it that I don't feel that I'm worthy? Okay, because most of us have this issue. There's always a physical issue. It'll be arthritis, it'll be gout, wow. it'll be, it'll be uh, lower back pains. Yeah, okay? I wanted and to yeah. ask you about that yeah, because um, very recently have I learned that if you have any kind of emotional baggage that manifests in physical um, pain somewhere, something, some ailment. And you just learned it now, come on. Not now, but just, you know, yeah. in the past okay. maybe three years. Yeah, yeah, well, this is it. So every symptom that you have will have an emotional root cause. Every, wow. every disease that a person manifests and manifests upon that person is directly linked to some form of an emotion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any chronic condition, um, anything that lasts more than three months is mm -hmm. definitely connected to an emotion. Any itis conditions um, such as arthritis and colitis mm -hmm. and appendicitis and sinusitis, 
any itis condition is an inflamed emotion that's stuck in your system okay yeah um oh my son has a message for me alhamdulillah <laughs> does he have a question as well <laughs> you have a question uh no but i think he um realizes that you know we have 10 minutes left so alhamdulillah <laughs> but uh yeah i see that uh in myself too and the more deeper that i was digging i realized that yeah i do have these issues. they do line up my physical issues line up with my emotional mm-hmm. and noticing or paying attention to both of these and um doing the different healings um that you're talking about um i wanted you to uh, kind of re- reiterate and maybe talk about um the kind of healings that you do and in your community and also the one that's coming up you can just give us that yeah inshallah i mean if if people just um, connect uh, with me on my page at afia healing mm-hmm. um then everything is there inshallah all the all the details and the links are are, are connected there mm-hmm. um and again i think one sister's asked about you know after my mother's death i've developed so many symptoms right and yeah mm-hmm. they can be because it's part of your grief it's part of mm-hmm. coming to terms with it but also we hold ourselves to such an extent that once something uh, triggers us or there's a shock or trauma then the body lets go okay and in that letting mm-hmm. go it's it's just almost like the air is coming out of the tire okay and and it's just pss, yeah. coming out and all that emotion that comes out that's, that you've been holding on to has to now manifest itself as symptoms until you process it and so this is what i find in the community us, it's almost like our body's telling us hey yeah. there's something you need to take care of messengers every yes, disease is a messenger okay mm-hmm. so if it's cancer if it's um you know uh, pcos it's fibroids it's uh, infertility or mm-hmm. gout ibs it's just a message saying look something's going on in your environment that you are not able to deal with or you haven't dealt with it or you've mm-hmm. just shoved it under the carpet please mm-hmm. deal with it we've hold we've mm-hmm. held on to it for so long can't do it anymore how much of it has to do with our diet because there's some things that we're told that you know um it's because of your diet so how much is Rubbish. it is it is it None. okay okay it's it's it, your diet will only affect you depending on the mindset that you have okay. okay so once once you've got for example gout and they say it's due to an excess of uric acid no the the emotion was there um and it's amazing gout is in the ball joint of your toe right mm-hmm. and and that's where you put pressure in to to walk and move forward and that's where the pain is emotionally it's connected to you not being able to move forward in life something is stopping you mm-hmm. but in order for that symptom to manifest there has to be an increase in uric acid oh wow okay so the uric acid comes in and it's doing its job they do a test on you and they say yeah high uric acid stop eating meat mm-hmm. stop eating meat does not deal with the emotion that still needs to be dealt with that someone mm-hmm. in your life is stopping you from moving forward and you know what a lot of times that emotion how is it going to get how is it going to get your attention it has to go through physical yeah. so that increase in uric acid like you were saying increase in the acid is going to cause you to have some attention yeah and it's supposed Because, to lead back to your emotions is that what you're saying you know we we are electrochemical beings mm-hmm. our mind works on electricity mm-hmm. right there's neurons firing all the time and mm-hmm. that neuron of the brain extends down our spinal column into the central nervous system and then mm-hmm. into the peripheral nervous system so there's electricity flowing throughout us whatever thoughts are going on in our brain it switches on the endocrine system that releases the hormone for that if it's if i need adrenaline mm-hmm. if i need cortisol mm-hmm. if i need serotonin or melatonin these are chemicals yeah okay and this is why every emotion is connected to a chemical mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and depending on what my thought is that that chemical is going to be released in my brain and i will act accordingly so the whole idea is that you're allowed to have stress but then you need to have rest yeah but our modern world doesn't allow for that rest to take place because yeah. we finish work we come back and then we're into the house stress and then the homework yeah. stress and then putting the kids to bed stress and then yeah. we are stressed so then we sort mm-hmm. of de-stress by looking at our phones and reading stuff that stresses us even more so we don't yeah. get restful sleep mm-hmm. so this becomes chronic stress mm-hmm. and eventually your body will say can't take it yeah one thing that you said that how we are like electromagnetic and 
Um, and, you know, we hear that a lot, energy and healing, um, just the protons and neutrons. And I was teaching my son chemistry and we were, we just did intro to chemistry and we were talking about each cell and then just the atom and the protons and electrons. And, and it hit me. I'm like, why isn't this mainstream? Because yes, we are made out of atoms and yeah. every atom has protons, electrons, and they're positively or negatively charged. Yeah. And of course that affects us. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, people say to do grounding or they're doing other things to actually make your, um, yeah. have some balance in your body. Mm. And I think that's a missing piece that we don't pay attention yeah. to as much as we should. And I think this is why, you see, coming back to the Quran and the Sunnah will, will, will bring us back into our middle way. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're not extreme with everything. That ultimately, healing takes place on three levels. Physical, emotional, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Right? Islamically, we have the physical way of healing, whether it's through herbs and etc., etc. Emotionally, mm -hmm. we know we've been given enough um, a hadith pertaining to the way we should think. Okay? Mm -hmm. The way we should look at and think about mm -hmm. others' problems and love for others while we love for ourselves, etc. Yes. But then the last part, um, you know, and, and this is something that, you know, in, in, the, in the Western uh, field, we've got people like Gabor Matt, we've got Joe Dispenza, we've got Bruce Lipton. They've come out with amazing work, scientifically mm -hmm. proven how you can heal physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. The point where they get really stuck with, unfortunately, is the spiritual part. Okay, yeah. now this as Muslims, we have, alhamdulillah, we have the book of Allah, we have the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm -hmm. And after doing what we can physically and emotionally, we leave the rest to Allah. But what you find in their books, unfortunately, is they now thinking, well, we've got rid of God. We've got scientific experiments backing our physical and emotional state. Mm -hmm. What do we do for the spirit? Mm -hmm. And for that, now they have to turn to ayahuasca, they turn to mushrooms, they try turn to all sorts of little things that is going to try and make them spiritual. Yeah. And, the, and the scary thing, unfortunately, is that Muslims are following this path and mm -hmm. opening up themselves to the jinn world. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they think that they're getting healing and stuff like that. And it, it's not, you know, and this is why when, when it, and we see this, alhamdulillah, when a person has full yaqeen, when they have belief that this prescription as said by the Prophet sallallahu or what is in the Quran, if I recite it and do this in the perfect way, it's literally handing your emotional problems over to Allah. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you detach yourself away from the emotion, your manifestation of disease no longer associates with this new being that you are. Oh. Okay, so That's every good. disease sits with you because your thought process is at a particular level. Mm -hmm. You change your thought, this doesn't exist anymore because oh. it doesn't yeah. fit. Yeah. Now you have a new test. Yeah. Okay, and it might be worse for you. So whatever yeah. it is, subhanAllah, it's just, you just carry on from step to step, stage yeah. to stage. And, um, and it's in our hands. I mean, you know, how far do we go? This is tawfiq from Allah then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like the more that I practice these things, even, you know, like small things like doing the morning adhkar, doing the evening adhkar, and I'm like reflecting on it, what the affirmation is. Yeah. It's... It's life changing. Hmm. And all these small things that we think that we've forgotten that we don't do anymore, bringing that back into our life. Yeah. And we can only do that when we have time, right? When we can slow down yeah. and just implement those things and make time for them, make room in our calendar and our mind yeah. for them. Um, That's somebody what I said a few days ago about, you know, we should have in our day a set time for non negotiables. Mm -hmm. your, your salah mm -hmm. should be read five times a day. A portion of the Quran must be read daily. Your sunnah askars morning and evening should be read daily. And the same with your children. Okay, because that's what we have to sync. That energetic mm -hmm. spiritual level needs to be in sync. That how we are doing it, our kids are doing it. Mm -hmm. And that way, alhamdulillah, it brings about harmony in the home, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Everything that we talked about was really, really important. There's so many things that you highlighted that we have to look deeper into. And someone asked about getting rid of, get rid of certain emotions. And Just message I would me, really, please, privately, inshallah, yeah. we'll, I'll answer them. Yes. And I would highly recommend you looking into and signing up for the uh, deep, deep trauma release um, that is going to be starting next week. Yeah, inshallah. inshallah. And um, I plan to do so, inshallah. So I hope I mean, many of you guys do as well. And all of these things, these are all things that we're investing in, not only for ourselves, 
not only for our relatives, our family, our parents that have passed away, the generation before, but the coming generation, the legacy yeah. that we leave, the our progeny. This is all connected to that, and it's something that we have to take seriously yeah. and really uh, make time for and prioritize. Zakala khair uh, please Barakala anybody Afi. who does not follow Afi Healing please do so and um again uh, message brother Zahir and he can answer your questions Zakala khair thank you much we can all use these healing you know actually learn about healing go through it with you and then inshallah that can help us become more present Amin. and a better parent Amin ya rab Jazakumullah khair Allah bless you Assalamu alaikum Assalam